and welcome to our first panel discussion on Lost Found Me. I'm Joanna Franklin and I'll be your moderator. And today we're talking about documentation and the archive. So thank you so much to all our panelists for coming. I'd like to introduce everyone. So to my left, we have Timor, Dr. Timor Arnaj from the Liget Gallery. And we have Dora Halashi from an archivist at Art Pool. To our right, we have a pond, a developer for works.io. And we have Roberta Palma, an independent curator based in Rome, Italy. And finally, Roland Ramos, an independent curator based in New York. So if I could uh, pass the microphone around and just ask each of you to say a few words on your institution or your practice. The Art Pool Art Research Center was founded in 1979 by Giorgio Garantai, and this is by Julia Canizai. Uh, this is also a non profit institution and uh, tried to collect uh, documentation from 1960s uh, international and Hungarian uh, contemporary and uh, fine arts. We try to focus uh, different kind of uh, materials uh, in real art, fluxes, installation art. Uh, performance art, uh, video art, and uh, try to find new tendencies and uh, progressive uh, movements. My name is Abe Nunn. I'm from Works.io. Um, Works.io is a startup that was started in 2013, so we're very young compared to the other ones here. Um, what we do is we build software, software application on the web to empower living artists to make sustainable careers by helping them document their work and uh, promote their stuff online. I'm Roberta Palma, as you all knows. We are part of this Creative Connection program. I'm a freelance creator based in Rome, Italy. And I'm part of this program and we are just meeting this talk together. Uh, my name is Roland Ramos. I'm also a member of 7x8 Curatorial Conversations. And uh, I'm a freelance curator in New York. I uh, organize art festivals, art exhibitions, and uh, that's about it. Uh, 
complex projects. And, uh, and uh, somehow the documentation First look, the documentation is the end of the process. We doing something and then we make documentation. But, uh, but many times. To making exhibitions or, or artworks is is a process. So on the beginning it is a and not only process about the communications. On the beginning, communications between the artists and the galleries and institutions and the artists, or, or between the artists, and, uh, <coughs> and later with the public. And uh, so the question is, where is the place of the, of the this work? And, and what I wish to say, would like to say is uh, much better if the communication uh, start earlier and, and with the public and or if we uh, published or publish the communication of the preparation and then it became later a documentation. So that's really interesting about uh, documenting the process. And I was thinking about this this morning as I was thinking about archiving. And um, for me archiving has this very paradoxical meaning because when you think about what is an archive, it's sort of a record of what happened in the past. But when you think about, say, the activity of archiving, what you're actually doing is communicating with the future. Because what you record as you're archiving is actually what you leave behind for future people to uh, interact with those objects or your process. So it's, it was really interesting for me to think about that, like, um, this archiving is actually about the future and how you communicate to the future. And for me, as a technologist, I'm always thinking about uh, what does actually communication look like in the future, like five years from now, ten years from now, and how will, like, how you do the archiving documentation of your work today affect what can be possible in later years? That's just a, my thing. Yes, of course. Yeah, and I wanted to ask you, because you it's really important for me to documenting the process of set up an exhibition and what is behind the, the last result of an exhibition. Maybe also because we are becoming more conscious of how important it is to have this kind of documentation. So there are two different levels of documenting an exhibition. The first one is like one that is related with uh, advertising, so showing photos and press release and documenting this kind of ready-made information and the other one that is maybe more close to the archival method that is like also recording the way you start to work and all this, the setting up of the exhibition that is really important. I think that is really important for maybe uh, start to build the story of every uh, exhibition and also for us as a creator to know how the process of set up an exhibition. When, when I visited, uh, we had the pleasure of visiting the Leeward Gallery, uh, I, it, uh, it reminded me of how when I got started in uh, 2007, I was doing it from my, from my apartment, from my bedroom. I didn't, I didn't think I would be doing it for this long. So the idea of archiving, what I had done, didn't even come into my mind until uh, people showed interest in how I had come to this place. So it, it's uh, now 
going forward, every time that I have an exhibition or a festival, I have to document it because people want to know how does it differ from last year? Well, how, is, how have things changed? And you can't analyze the changes from one exhibition or festival or show to another unless there's some way to document and archive. And Dora, for you, with Art Pool, and you have this active archive, and again, working with the artist and thinking about um, how the future is going to look back and read these, do you often think about that role in shaping these art historical narratives? Answer the yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the view art tool, uh, uh, it, it, it started Jordi Galante. So, Jordi Galante is an artist. Uh, he, he said he's a painter originally, and uh, after that, he he made a lot of things. So, he was a capture, he was a male artist, uh, he was an organizer, he was a curator. So different so he he tried many different roles uh, things in, in the art world and uh, he started uh, documenting the materials uh, from the 1970s in Balatumbuglar and after that in the, in the 80s uh, he, he took many photos and uh, and recorded the sound and after that he bought the camera and uh, recorded the event in, in the video so so this is a kind of, but uh, his aim was that uh, to, uh, to, so this material uh, remained and stayed in the future in a kind of a studying way and if the researchers uh, coming to the art pool to research or uh, they want to know more about some exhibitions so they can reconstruct a bit and they can use uh, photos and make uh, watch the videos so I think it's more complex things uh, whether if uh, there is only an article of the exhibition and after that in uh, 2007 since um, I, I tried to uh, so I, I go many exhibitions and I um, I take photos and, and record music and record videos so so I studied art history, so my, my role is kind of different. Uh, so my, my task is a kind of archivist uh, um, task, and, uh, but uh, I also uh, have a lot of connections with artists and uh, institutions, and we, we try to, uh, to focus on, on the future also. <laughs> so, so, yes. Shortly, and um, and the second question is um, um, the shaping art history from yes. narratives. So, as you contribute to uh, this active archive, are you thinking about the fact that when people look back at these materials, what you have actively done, what you photograph, is going to impact how people see particularly this time period of art? Yes. <laughs> The researchers can find many uh, art theory books and uh, they can research and they can uh, deep effect and uh, they can speak uh, live artists so they can uh, make uh, interviews with them. So I think it's a good helping uh, for them. And in terms of this process of documentation of art taking these photos, do you ever wonder if the process of documenting the art is becoming an artwork in and of itself? Particularly uh, with works.io, you have these images that are photographs of the work. Does that for you take on its own life as a photograph of an image, or is it simply representative of the image? Actually, um, in terms of things taking on its own life, I think in today's world of documentation, not only do you document the objects and sort of the metadata around it, like how, like what else about these objects are special or the context, but also the connections for this work with other works, other artists. Like for example, if you want to document an exhibition, 
Uh, today you could also link to all the artists in that exhibition and then those works that they produced and any for the curator and other exhibitions that the curator had. So all these connections uh, add to the provenance of a work, I think, when you document it. And the more you capture, the better context you can give for this type of work. And um, as we sort of move into the age where documentation is getting much more easy and accessible, for example, 10 years ago, not everyone had a digital camera, but now everyone has one on their phone. So what does that mean in terms of the amount of documentation you can have for everything? And in the future, even looking a few years in the, in the future, things like Google Glass, where people will soon be recording video of everything that they do. So storage is getting cheaper, it's more ubiquitous, and we're gonna have so much data about all this stuff that the important questions won't be around can you document it, but more about what interesting information can you retrieve or gather or sort or filter from all this data about works, how they're connected, what they do. Can I uh, talk to that? Yes. You know, that reminds me of the, is the art of documentation becoming an art itself, is the question. And I, I see that, uh, that the fact that we have so many pieces of art taking on their own lives and that we can track them. Uh, that is an art itself. I think back to the last uh, event that I, that I uh, organized, was 115 artists. Each artist bought in at least 10 pieces of art. I mean, if you follow the numbers on that, the, the fact that you're able to take each piece of art and label it, track it, give it its own independent URL that works.io is able to do, allows it uh, allows the artist to receive a lot more legitimacy, especially if they're just coming up. Uh, and you can take that single work and you can track it through every single show coming up. It, it, it expands the horizons for all the artists just coming out of school. If, if an artist starts a CV right now, they can track every piece of art that's ever created, and, and, and it, you can follow through galleries and collections all over the world for years to come. So. Yes, there is a tremendous art to it, but I think that we're just at the dawn of that age. And to think about what it's going to look like in the future is very, very exciting. Um, my opinion, documenting art exhibition and this kind of event is becoming more and more like artistic. I, I don't think that this kind of documentation can become really art piece but they are becoming more and more close to the way art deal with documenting the present. And this is what I see in contemporary art practice everywhere. I mean that artists are really close to this kind of post-production and reproduction or ready-made documentation like uh, dealing with archives, dealing with old photos and whatever, this kind of documentation. And in the same way, our way to documenting the present is because, as you say, everyone has a good camera, we, we know how to make good photos, so everything is becoming more and more artistic. So these two different practices are becoming really, really close. And for uh, Dora and Timor, both of you are quite active in photographing these exhibitions. When you are doing this, are you thinking of these photos as artworks in themselves, or are they, again, simply documentation? This a, yes, this is a good question. <laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, in the past, it's, it was the, there was much more differences. In the 80s or before, because then it was the art object, it's very clear that this is a painting or a, an object. And this is different as the, as the documentation, but uh, when it became the performance art or, or something like that, that was a, an event, and then it's uh, finished, it's over, and then uh, the art pieces became the photos and the documentations became the, the object. So, and now uh, this situation is, is 
it's different because uh, we can make not only photos and videos, but we can put it on the internet. So it's absolutely fast. In the 80s, when we was able to make photos, but there was no reason to to show these photos because there was the exhibition. Uh, the photos became in, important when the exhibition closed, and uh, now it's a totally different situation. And and uh, if I'm not wrong, the art is, is a communication process. So and uh, the places. Art is today maybe more close to be uh, message or one part, one pieces of these communications. So I, I guess the, this two now is much more close as it was before. I can say that yes, it can be artier, but basically uh, the aim is documenting of, uh, of artists, uh, documenting of events, documenting of people, and uh, so if, uh, if my boss, but uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't like to say this word, <laughs> because in our pool, uh, there is not a hierarchy, you know? So, but uh, he said that if, if, they, if he said that don't do this because you, you cannot uh, take photos, okay, I, 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 I make different things. But uh, he said, okay, you can do this right, so when it's good, so I do this. So that's it. It just came to my mind a pretty clear example of documentation is art. Um, Last year or two years ago, there was a workshop called the Subjective Atlas of Hungary, and, there was, and they collected together a group of artists, and they essentially mapped Hungary in their own subjective ways and through their art practice. So, okay, this is not exactly about documenting their art, but their their subjective documentation of something becomes an art itself. Yeah, uh, I think that. In contemporary art practice, this idea of documenting the reality of the present of a really specific issue is become really more and more important. I can think about a lot of artists that do this kind of work in the documenting process or really everyday practice and this becoming hard. But this becoming hard because as Tibor say art is communication, so you can uh, rethink, rediscover new meanings or new messages inside a uh, really, I don't know, everyday practice or in a new a new way to reinterpret it and archive or documents that are already made. This is about the, I think that it's about the practice of post-production and reinterpreting already made things in art that I think is just like the base of the contemporary art practice. Just one more thing that I think uh, it's a very important thing that uh, what you are doing it's important to love it. So if I don't love this, I I, I make something else. So but I love it. <laughs> and before I return to my questions, I would like to open it up to the audience to see if anyone there has any questions for anyone on the panel. <laughs> Recreating past exhibitions is, is part of what we do as a, as as adding to 
the history of, of art. We were, we think that we're doing everything over, like we're doing things that are brand new. Some people have never studied art history. Oh, I'm breaking new ground. The truth is, without studying the history or the archives, we, we really don't know what breaking ground is. But uh, also, just uh, the evolution of exhibitions that we've taken on individually, uh, we can always recontextualize them uh, with new additions. Say, uh, I put on an exhibition three years ago, but I intend on putting it on again. But the evolution of my idea of what I'm trying to drive at can only be deduced by taking what worked from the last exhibition and adding new works that more come to terms with what I'm trying to discover through the curatorial process. And only through working with a collection of archives and collections can I really find the new work that, can, that I can uh, you know, translate this idea into a great show. So, but yeah, yeah making, uh, making new shows from old was absolutely uh, very important. I, yeah, we are talking a lot about this remake exhibition. As a creator, of course, I will be really happy to see how it looks like when it's become formed. But I'm uh, really interesting, for example, I was wondering about when activities become form number two, like a new version, really in our present context, it will, will be really interesting, uh, more than maybe remake it as, as it was, because um, this is, this kind of exhibition can have a, like an historical interest, in, but it's not about curating. It's just about, about like, like yeah, remaking in a really historical way. So it, maybe it would be really interesting to have the version number to the today when after the become Yeah, you can think about making it. Maybe I can say something. Yes. Because that's my home town. <laughs> so what I really, sorry. But yeah, it's actually a very nice example. I also was thinking about it. And it happened in the Kunsthalle in Bern. And uh, uh, I knew a lot of people, like my teachers from university, who saw this exhibition. And uh, they, they visited it, like the original one. And I guess it, the, the version now in Venice didn't really add something. It was just like uh, they tried to, to, to make this accessible again to, to the now. But it's, I, I totally agree with you. you know, like it, Yes, the yes, they made, yeah, exactly, but therefore, what does it really add as a, uh, as a documentation to have this now, even transfer to another space, and they rebuilt the, the shape of the Kunsthalle in Bern, kind of artificially, so I don't really know if it was kind of a strange feeling to see this place, because they could have reproduced it in Bern, but of course this was, I guess it was kind of a marketing gag of, of the Venice guys, <laughs> that's my opinion. question uh, for the panel is obviously everyone here has experience documenting um, their own institution or um, their own exhibitions to a certain degree but of course as time goes on these uh, platforms become open to other people taking photos of your work and other people contributing to these what are really becoming more open archives and I'd like to hear from anyone's opinion on whether or not you see this as something that is really fantastic and opening doors, something that's going to create a big influence, or something that perhaps can be interpreted as problematic when it is your own work that is being displayed by other people or even reinterpreted by other people. Well, I think we live in a world of remixing reusing, reinterpreting, repurposing things. And if you create something and let it out in the world, I think it just has its own life. So once you, you can't control something after you, you've made it and, it and it leaves. You can't control what people say about it, how they see it, where they're going to see it, where they're going to see that documentation. Uh, so I think that these, these works um, there's, there's no way to say that you can... It's, it's not a problem that you should be thinking about it as an artist or creator because you can't do much about it. I, I, I work with 
too many artists that are like, you know, don't, don't photograph my work. <laughs> or, or, you know, you have to check with me before you, you take this picture. You can't control it all. But at the same time, it, if, if it's one-on-one -on -one, you're really trying to take a picture of a picture, I mean, just buy it. <laughs> but, but it doesn't always work like that. Uh, I, I wish everybody felt the same way as you. I mean, I wonder if fine artists have the same opinion as photographers. You know, I, I'm, I don't know if they feel the same way necessarily as sculptors or installation artists. I believe it, it depends on the, the, the kind of art that's really being done and on the individual who's making the art. But that's a, that's a singular conversation. And uh, if someone loves the art enough, they need to talk to the artist is the bottom line. I was thinking, uh, yeah, I'm agreeing with him. It, you cannot stop now, today, this kind of process of reproduction and re-having all the same images. Uh, but I was thinking, uh, what if an artist just decide, like a painter, just decide to never to photograph of his work and just show it in the exhibition? Clearly, he just become really famous or completely but it's really interesting. But I, I really think that you cannot stop this kind of process. And now, maybe, also because we have all, always a lot of information and our memories become shorter and shorter, so we really need to document everything we see. I, well, okay. we'll probably wrap it up there. And I just want to say, after spending the past few weeks with every individual on this panel, and seeing the work that you're doing. I really do want to wholeheartedly thank you for such fantastic contributions that I think everyone here is making to the contemporary art scene in Hungary as well as around the world. And so thank you and for participating. And of course, as our theme is curatorial conversations, uh, this conversation will continue throughout the day. We do have an archive that we've created and uh, publications for everyone to see. And thank you all for coming. Video camera. Mm -hmm.
Do you like our mini art store? Sometimes to make the no comments. Uh, do you like our sorry. mini archive? <laughs> Is it? Oh! Happy Hanukkah! Happy Hanukkah! Did you say have a Hanukkah? No! It's really? It's fine. Yeah! It's fine. Oh, yeah. Saturday is fine. Because you know what? Ashley, I've. I've got it. 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 I've got it.